Yeah, good morning. I'm Dale Besh, and we brought Dana and Marge Elrod's 36 Roadster here to the uh, NSRA National Meet. And we were lucky last night to win the Builder of the Year award. The car has been very popular, and it's exciting to show the car down here. It's been a, a major build. We spent roughly in the range of 11 years on and off working on the car. The engine in the car is a 392 Chrysler Hemi. It's out of a 1957 Imperial. It has a Hillborn fuel injection unit on it. All the plating on it is nickel plated. That's what gives it that little gold tinge on there. The valve covers are original Mickey Thompson valve covers that we modified with the Chrysler Firepower lettering on it. We used a lot of Moon equipment on it, on it to try to bring back the 50s appeal of the car. We wanted the engine exposed, that's why we did the, the hood straps on it instead of running hood sides because we wanted to run an exposed engine on it. The, the car is built to drive. We have an automatic overdrive in the car. And even though it appears to have a lot of horsepower, it has plenty. We got a large gas tank. We're up to about 26 gallons on the fuel capacity just so that we can drive the car and have fun with the car. We started with an original 36 Ford Roadster body. And the proportions on a 36 Roadster, I always felt they had too much body on the rear half of the car and not enough on the front. So to correct that, we shortened the body. We cut it through right here. We took three inches out and then we cut here and across here and took three inches out up here. And then what we ended up doing was sliding the whole cockpit straight back. We left the wheelbase where it was. That shortened the back end of the car. Then we took and we raised the grill on the car. We raised it an inch and a half and we leaned the grill back three inches on the car to achieve the same rake that I made when I, we cast up these windshield posts. We made wooden Bondo ones first and then we had a mold made and we cast them up out of brass. But that way we could get a longer front end on the car with the shorter back end and the fenders, the wheelbase still stayed the same. We had, we had a really good set of front fenders but in all our modifications, we had 14 foot of weld in each front fender. They're, they're sliced all the way around here. The openings are actually raised on this car. We cut the whole bottom off the running boards, both fenders. We raised them up an inch to try to get ground clearance. And then coming around here, you remember I said we raised that grill an inch and a half. Well, you can't just take and bend it at one point because it won't look right, so you have to do that real gradually in your movement of your steel so it still looks stock. Okay, we're gonna go and look at the interior of the car now. We started with a scratch, nothing on the inside, and we decided in this car not to put a dash in the car. So we built the car dashless and just put gauge pods that are floating down below it. The old Hades heater box is actually the air conditioner and heater. We have a vintage air unit behind the seat that has insulated duct that goes down into the floor, down through the frame, up the firewall, and it blows out there to get your AC. It has extra pusher fans in line to where you don't lose your air volume and it'll work. The seat we just fabricated out of bare steel because we kind of wanted to reminisce an old bench seat, but a hot rod look also. All the gauges and switches are out of a 1950 Ford. They call them shoebox Fords, and that's we wanted that old looking knobs. The steering, steering wheel we fabricated, the shifter we fabricated. We tried to use quite a few of the moon equipment items. That's why the gas pedal and the brake pedal, it brings back the 50s look. 
of what you would have back then. And the rubber floor mats, you know, it's just more appropriate to have the rubber in this car than it would have been carpet because it, it, we wanted the car to look like a hot rod, not a street rod. Okay, when we got around to doing the inside of the trunk, we wanted that basically stark look like the interior. We didn't need a plush trunk area. So it is all finished off in either metal panels or the rubber matting. The deck lid is powered up and down. The bottom side of this deck lid we have is all louvered. And we have a cutout here where the louvers had to go up to clear the fuel tank. This fuel tank is a five gallon tank, but it is connected to a 22 gallon tank directly below it that this car has a full belly pan underneath it so you can't see any of that stuff in it. But that way we have the fuel capacity to be able to drive the car. Because otherwise we'd never be able to, you wouldn't get much distance out of five gallons. <laughs> I don't imagine the motor's gonna be too efficient on fuel. We started, uh, started showing this car in January when we took it to the Grand National Roadster Show in Pomona, California, which we were one of the finalists for the uh, America's Most Beautiful Roadster there. Then from there we went to Del Mar two months later and we were in the top five for Street Rod de Elegance. Then we went, went on to Des Moines to win a Builder's Choice Award there at a good guy's show and on to Columbus, Ohio, which we were in the top five for the Street Rod of the Year there. From here we're going to the SEMA show. The car is going to be on display in Exalta's booth. We have Exalta finish paint on it. It'll be on display there and after that Dana plans on driving the car. He actually sold his tow vehicle and his trailer and he is definitely going to drive the car and have fun with it. And so hopefully next year you'll see this car here but it's going to be out there in the lineup. And it's fun. Dana and Marge definitely will enjoy the car. And I'll even get mine out probably then again and be able to drive with them. <laughs>